Hey guys, I'm painting a hummingbird today with alcohol inks and I thought you might like to hear um, some of my process and how I do this. So right now I've got my hummingbird sketch um, already drawn out on the Yupo paper, which is a plastic paper. Um, it is recyclable, which is good. Um, it's white. They do have clear. I haven't used that yet, but I think in the future I probably will. Um, this um, particular painting, I um, used a reference photo from a website called Pixabay, which has um, some pictures or photos of different things that are um, available for creative use and um, the, under the Creative Commons. And it's really great because it's hard to get a picture of a hummingbird. I have this really wonderful hummingbird feeder that's right on our window in our living room and all these beautiful birds come right up to it but I just have not been able to capture a really good photo and uh, so maybe <laughs> maybe I'll get better at that that's like one of my plans um, while we're kind of stuck home with the coronavirus um, we don't have the coronavirus but we're still social distancing because my mom lives with us and you know she's she's a uh, high risk so Maybe we'll learn some new skills and I'll become a better photographer. But in the meantime, Pixabay is just wonderful because, I mean, they've got photos that I just will never be able to take, like lions in Africa or um, tropical birds. I mean, I'm not traveling much right now, so it's really probably unlikely I'm going to have my own photos to work from. So I really appreciate those photographers. And the great thing is you can donate money to them um, for letting you use their their work, which, you know, I think it's really important to do to support everybody in the arts um, doing creative work because I, I, that's just important to me. So right now I'm using masking fluid and I'm going over all of the lines that I've drawn out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm also trying to fill in places that I want to keep white. So I like to sort of outline because when I do the background ink, it won't go onto my flower so much or onto my hummingbird, which will kind of keep the colors a little cleaner. Um, so especially around the eye and stuff like that, I really want to get the white um, in there so that later when I peel the masking fluid off, It'll ha leave that nice shine on the eye and on the feathers. Ooh, excuse me. It's going to help give it some depth. And I just, I like doing it this way. It gives me sort of a batik look. And I like the energy um, that I get from using the masking fluid. Um, you might hear masking fluid referred to as frisket. There's a couple of names for it, apparently. So if you hear me say frisket at some point, I'm still talking about the masking fluid. And I actually bought this at Walmart, I think, for $8. So it's not super expensive. I don't need um, anything really fancy because I'm working on plastic. And it's not going to um, degrade the paper or anything. Um, I usually try to work with, um, you know, supplies that are for artists because... They don't have acid in them and different things like that that you have to worry about. But in this case, I'm using a really cheap paintbrush to put the masking fluid on. And so it's, it's that helps because, man, our supplies are expensive. So some people put soap on their, uh, like dish soap. They dip their paintbrush into dish, dish soap before putting it in the frisket, and that will help the frisket come off. Of your brush. I don't worry about that so much because I just tend to use the brush over and over again and sometimes like once it dries on there it makes a nice kind of like stubby end that I find helpful and then I do kind of just peel it off sometimes. So right now I'm sort of splattering masking fluid all over the paper because I want to have some white areas um, kind of like when you're in a garden at dusk and the lights reflecting off the bugs and you just see all these 
things in the air and I kind of wanted to recreate that and I think it does does give the painting a little bit more energy too and if you went around and put the dots in it just wouldn't be the same it's got to be sort of organic so I just fling it on there <clears throat> and then you need to let the frisket or masking fluid dry and it doesn't really take too long where I live I live in the southwest where it's pretty hot and dry and um, I think when I was actually doing this painting I had a fan blowing so it, it dried pretty quickly and you'll be able to tell it's dry because it won't be um, like runny when you touch it it'll sort of look shiny and rubbery <clears throat> okay so I'm putting on some blue this is indigo blue a ranger ink color I use mostly Ranger, but I do have a few pinatas. Um, I like the pinatas because they, they're kind of more um, opaque and really bright. Um, but I do mostly use Rangers because, honestly, like, it's just what I'm used to. And they're a little um, less thick. I've noticed the pinatas are thicker and they don't, they don't go as far. They're kind of just more, um, just... They just don't um, spread as much, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going around the plant and the flower. Um, I'm keeping that ink kind of on the right side of the masking fluid. I want to keep the paper really clean where the flower and the hummingbird are so I'm not getting muddied colors later. If you do make a mistake with the alcohol ink, sometimes you can take a paper towel or a cloth and dip it in alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I usually use 91% and you can just wipe it off. And if you're using a color like this indigo, it might stain the paper a little bit, but you can just paint right over it. Some colors just wipe off completely. No, alcohol is a little hard to get right now, so if you're just starting out, don't get discouraged and keep looking. You'll find some. And you can use the, um, like the 70% or the 60%. It doesn't have to be 91. I think it's just what I was able to get. So I'm putting in a little bit of a denim blue um, in here, and it's it's a little bit of a grayer blue. I'm just making kind of like little sky splashes. We live in New Mexico, so we're all about sky here. It's just beautiful and big, and I guess it would be kind of like living near the ocean, except we have the sky, and it's blue, and sometimes we have amazing sunsets with just beautiful colors. I'm from Connecticut originally, so I remember seeing, like, paintings from New Mexico or the Southwest and thinking, oh, there's no way the sky looks like that. It's just so ridiculously over the top. And then now that I live here, it's like, that is the sky. I mean, it is so bright. So off screen, um, you can't see really my palette. <laughs> um, you'd probably be surprised. So I am literally using the top, I think of a yogurt container, like the plastic lid. We're really big on trying to use things more than once, especially plastic. I have a 10 year old daughter and she's just gung ho about recycling. And she is, you know, on us all the time to make sure that we're doing the right thing for the planet, which is wonderful. So I've got like a lid that I'm just sort of using, um, I take the inks in the little bottles and I squirt out a couple of inks, at, a couple of drops at a time. I try not to put too much because it will evaporate and dry. And I can add alcohol to it again to sort of rejuvenate it, but it's not, you know, quite the same. And then I have another plastic dish that's filled with alcohol. Um, that I'm using to sort of dip my brush in sometimes when I want to spread the ink around a little bit. And so you don't really need anything fancy for that. I've used um, plates and the alcohol will just wipe 
or just pour out, you can pour out the alcohol, but the alcohol inks will just wipe right off and you can keep reusing um, the plastic. <clears throat> so I'm going around the hummingbird's wings right now and I'm trying to outline them and I'm staying on the right side of the masking fluid, but if a little bit goes over, that's okay too. I like little mistakes. I don't even want to call them mistakes, but you know, little things that happen that I wasn't planning. It makes it a little bit exciting and fun. And, and it sometimes comes out better than if I could totally control everything. If you do want more control with your inks, it's good to let your the ink sit on the palette for a, a little bit and let the alcohol sort of evaporate and it gets a little bit thicker and it doesn't spread as much. So that time I just took the bottle and squirted it right on onto the paper because I know I'm going to do a big area. And this is the denim blue again, so I'm kind of trying to change the color and thinking about the sky and how it gets a little bit duller as it gets closer to the horizon. Not that I'm too worried about horizon in this painting because it's pretty close up and it's not really a landscape. But I do like to think about those things. You can see how I'm kind of putting a, lo a little bit of alcohol in there and it sort of gives it some, I want to say, texture to it. And I'm sorry about the shine in the middle. I have a um, a light up there. And so the alcoholics are pretty shiny, especially once they start to dry. And so you're going to get a little bit of shine. But later I'll have a photo where without the shine so you can really see it better. So I can see right there in the middle, there's sort of a line of masking fluid or frisket that's going down. So that'll be white when it peels off later. And I'm just getting in some fluid. So this hummingbird is going to be sort of an orangey brown. And I thought it would be good to get, you know, some nice blues around the hummingbird to kind of pop. Because I think it's probably a female hummingbird. Most of the hummingbirds I've painted in the past have been brighter colors. And um, so I would do the background maybe a little uh, less competitive with the bird, make it a little duller in the back so the bird would stand out. But this bird, you know, she's, she's kind of not too fancy looking, so I can do a little more in the background. Yeah, I have a bad habit too of using the same paintbrush to do an entire painting. <laughs> I could have probably done this a little faster if I used a painting, a paintbrush that was a little bigger. But I kind of just get into the zone and I'm not really thinking about anything except what I'm doing. And uh, I forget to switch paintbrushes. So I'm back with the indigo blue in the corner. I decided I wanted to kind of go around the whole painting around the outside with the indigo because um, it's a little brighter and I'm going to do this denim more in the center to sort of draw the eye to the center almost like giving it its own little frame and that the denim blue is interesting too because when it spreads it kind of gets a pink halo which is which is interesting sometimes I don't like it I mean other times I'm okay with it Kind of looks like sky. I left a white spot at the top because I just thought it might be nice to sort of give the impression of a cloud. So here it is. Um, sometimes I'll stop a little bit and let something dry, like the background, before I start working on the the other parts of the painting. Um, once the ink dries, it will still spread, but it's not quite as bad. So now I'm going in and doing some green. I think this was a, I think this one was a pinata green and it was called lime, which I thought 
is kind of funny because it does not look like lime at all to me. It's more like a um, grass green, I think. Um, so I'm going in and I just kind of getting around the flowers and the parts that are green and I'm painting right over some of the masking fluid. And I know when I take the masking fluid off, I'm going to have some spots I'll have to fill in probably. I've um, probably got too much masking fluid. So while that's kind of drying, and it doesn't take very long, usually, to, for the inks to dry, especially since I have a fan on it, um, I'm going to go in with another color green. I think this one was called Citrus, and it was a Ranger, a Ranger ink. I usually buy my inks at Joanne Fabrics, and I, uh, I get them online. They're cheaper. And sometimes they'll have those really great coupons where you can get 20% off your order and you just stock up. And I, <laughs> I stocked up right before the coronavirus started because I was doing classes in person. And so I have a lot of the same colors. So I'm probably going to be doing a lot of paintings in very similar colors um, for a while. Hopefully I'll get to do my in-person classes again because they were so fun. But I think it might be a while before we're able to do that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to be using my what I have. Um, this is a color called Plum. It's like a pinky, a little bit like magenta, I guess. And um, I really love it. It just pops and it's super pretty. And I have a I have quite a few bottles of it now, so at least I picked colors that I really like to stock up on. So this, these flowers are kind of tubular because that's what um, hummingbirds like to do, put their beaks inside. And that can be pretty difficult to convey, so we'll see if I can get this to come out quite right. I uh, put a lot of masking fluid because it was kind of um, shiny in the photo. So when I use plum or um, like these pink kind of colors, I usually go back in with um, maybe a purpley color or um, some kind of red. I think I might have used a sangria from um, the pinata inks, which is sort of a red, more of a pinkier red. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so you can see the inks aren't really blending in with the blue because I have the uh, the masking fluid sort of keeping the the pink inside the flower. Every once in a while, something will happen and we'll just completely bleed, and I'll have to kind of um, do something to sort of stop it and paint over it, which is one of the great things about the alcohol inks, too, is you can just start over and, um, and fix things so easily. I used to be really interested in watercolors, and they're pretty difficult because you can't really fix them. Like once you put the paint down, that's it. It's just really tough to not overwork it. And with the inks, it's just a lot easier for me anyway. And I guess too, because I, I'm not trying to control it so much. It's just sort of, um, you have happy accidents. <clears throat> I think I'm probably going in with a red now. Yeah. So I'm trying to make some shadows. So I have a darker red. It was also a ranger color, but I cannot remember the name of it right now. But I will put that list um, below. So if anybody is curious, and I'll also put a link to Pixabay so you can check that out. Um, if you're somebody who really wants to paint, but you're a terrible drawer, or you feel like you're a terrible drawer, there's ways around that. So <laughs> not too long ago, maybe 10 years ago, I took a community painting class at the library of all places. And 
the woman that was teaching the class told me that she felt like she just didn't have time to learn how to draw. She was older and she just really wanted to get started on the color. That That's what she was all about. So she used a projector. So she would take photos and then she would project them onto her canvas. She was an oil painter and um, sketch them out. And then she would start painting. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's like a great idea. So I tried doing that a few times and I have a projector and I do still use it because sometimes I want to take something small and blow it up and um, it saves time and because I'm all about color too. I just love color. And there's also um, this paper you can buy that's um, like tracing paper, but it's got like something on the back that will come off so you can draw on top of it and it'll leave a mark on the Yugo paper and then you could do it that way too. So you could put the paper, the sketching, tracing paper between the Yugo paper and your photograph and you could draw around it the outline or whatever that you're having trouble with and get it onto the paper so you can paint it. So I'm doing a butterscotch at color um, first. So I started with the lighter color and I colored the bird. And she's got lots of um, masking fluid kind of outlining her individual feathers. And I will go back later to it's a little bit of alcohol in my brush and just sort of dab it very and very small little spots to kind of give the illusion of feathers. The ink will kind of move. So I'm doing in some shadows right now with a darker color. Um, gosh, I think this is one of the browns from Ranger. I want to say like a one of the nut colors, like hazelnut. I'm pretty sure it was hazelnut, but I'll have to look. Um, it's a little strange too because when it kind of spreads like sometimes it gets like a grayish color like a purpley gray color and um but i don't really like too much so i try not to let it get too thinned out so see i'm doing some spots right there I try not to do them when you're doing some kind of little spot work you don't want it to be like those dots are all in a, in a row because it's just not really natural so you kind of want to let your hand go a little random there, and it'll give it some texture. I know I had some trouble with this bird's beak, too. Um, sometimes the, the ink just kind of goes a little fatter than I want. I'm putting in the feet, so she's got some feet in her eye. So the masking fluid's in there keeping the spots that I need white for me. And here we go with the beak. So the beak has some shine on it too. But my hands were a little bit unsteady, so I feel like her beak is a little thicker than I'd like. But sometimes it's okay. I'm going to do a little outlining with, with the black. This is, um, I think it's called pitch black, and it's a ranger color. Black tends to be pretty thick for me, and it might be because I've had it a long time. So it doesn't run usually too much. And I'm able to kind of go in and do what I, I guess I would call like dry brush work, even though it's not really dry, but it's drier than usual. I'm going to do a little bit of work around the eyes so it sort of stands out, give a little shadow so she looks a little more three dimensional. So now I'm going to do a little more shadow around the head, get her wings sort of in place. I had this moment where I thought I had reversed the wings somehow, and then I was a little panicked, but then I thought, oh well, it's too late now. <laughs> I'm going to put 
some dark on the bottom of the vein. And I just love how sometimes things just happen, like the dark blue under the wing in the background sort of helps with the shadowing. And that was just completely accidental. <clears throat> I think I'm either going in with a little bit of, I think a little more of the hazelnut color, just to give it some more depth and texture. Hummingbirds are so pretty, even the plain ones. Just, I really love birds. I'm, I think I'm going to start doing a series of birds. Um, I want to do um, ravens and um, some hawks, some real southwest birds. My husband's really into those. My girls can identify most of them, which I think is amazing, because I, I really can't. Like, no matter how many times my husband tells me the names, I still kind of forget. So she's starting to take some shape. One thing you have to be careful about too is if your background isn't completely dry, you don't want to touch it with your fingers, you'll get fingerprints or arm prints. I was really lucky this time because it, the ink was drying so quickly I didn't even have to think about it. But I have done that before and just put like a big fingerprint right in the right on the edge or on the side. Or I'll pick my hand up and like the whole bottom of my hand is dyed blue or something like that. And it, it doesn't really wash off of your skin very well. So there's been weeks where I've had to go around and I have purple um, cuticles and um, rainbow hands and uh, you know it's just part of being an artist I guess you're just gonna have to to live with it some people wear gloves I don't feel comfortable wearing gloves when I'm painting it's just too hot and you do have to be careful with alcohol inks because they have alcohol and you're using rubbing alcohol which can be kind of dangerous if you're breathing it in too much so I tend to work where I can have an open window so that the air is flowing through. Um, I try not to spray alcohol into the air too much so I'm breathing it in. Um, some people use like little spray bottles to kind of get a splattering effect, but I just use my paintbrushes. So I wasn't really happy with the blue in the background and I felt like it needed to be warmed up a little. So I got a color, um, it's a ranger color called Mermaid and it's kind of like a bluish green. It reminds me of a pool, like a pool color. And it's just a little warmer and I just kind of wanted to warm up some of the background, give it a little bit more interest. And the green, the greenish color sort of makes the red stand out a little bit, which is good. These are complementary. Okay, looking at it now, like this is done. I think so. So I'm going to start taking the masking fluid off. You want to make sure you let the ink dry. I probably paused the video there for a little bit um, before I started taking the masking fluid off because uh, the ink, if you if you don't wait, it, it'll smudge all over the place and it's a mess. So but if you're really good with the masking fluid, you can kind of peel it off in one stretch because it's all sort of connected. But once in a while I get that lucky. It's kind of like if you have a sunburn and you have to you're like peeling your skin. It reminds me of that, which I guess is probably gross, but you know, it just sort of peels off and then it rolls into a rubbery ball. And I usually do this with my hands where I'm rubbing over the top because then I can feel uh, where the rubbing, where the where 
where the uh, sorry about that where the uh, masking fluid still is um, because it's kind of rubbery and bumpy and I want to make sure I get it all off You can see how it sort of just brightens everything up when you take that off, and it just comes to life for me. Like it feels like there's movement. I can just feel the bird moving. There's sort of other things flying in the air. And there's usually a few things that I'm not happy with. So my masking fluid took most of the beak off, which actually probably would have been good if I had Maybe just left it alone, but I, I didn't. I had to go back in, and so <laughs> that's one of the other issues with painting. Is like, when do I stop? Like, when am I done with this? When is this good enough? And it's never like you just you'll look at it like six weeks from now and think, oh, I should just get my brush and add this little thing here or there. But you're probably better off not to do that. Just put it away. Because sometimes you just keep at it and you just mess it up. Oh, I've done that before too. And I think, oh man, I should have just left it alone. Okay, so I got the beak back on. And it's not as thick as it was. So that's good. And that picks up some of the flowers because I feel like there's just too much white. So I'm going back in with that really pretty pink. Kind of just highlighting over the white. The white sort of the masking fluid kept that white for me so that I could put in some really bright colors. And this is the tricky part too. So, you know, you go back in and sometimes you just overdo it. So, this is one of my uh, struggles. I have to know when to quit. There's sometimes like a I'll just get way too much ink and it just blobs right on and I'm so close to being finished and then I'm like, oh great, what do I do now? But the good thing too about alcohol inks, like I said, is you can kind of fix it. You could take a Q-tip and go in and sort of clean up some areas. Um, you can also use alcohol-based markers with these, which is amazing. Um, I've used Copic markers. I have a set. Um, I, can't, I think it's the Noir set. They're mostly darker colors, and um, I use those sometimes to go in and do some detail work like I'm doing now with the brush because I'm just not feeling confident that I'm going to be able to get the fine lines I want without being spreading with a brush. So sometimes I'll use a marker, and you can use Sharpies. We've done that in some of my classes. We um, painted some flowers and did a Sharpie. So. I guess we're done, I think. This is about when I'm going to sign my name. Oh, see, I'm using the Copic marker to sign my name. Oh, it doesn't show up very well, so, you know, I had the wrong glue. It's kind of a, uh, I need a different color, I think. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I love talking about this stuff. I love teaching it. I just love doing it. So thanks a lot. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day.